Hi there. Um, so we are going to give you a demo of APA, which is uh, uses WinFS and IRO to give you an encrypted file system that can do um, incremental sync. So let's initialize APA on Alice. All right. So we have APA here. <laughs> Okay, and now um, let's do some file systemy things, right? So we can create a file in maybe the public, or create a directory in the public folder, and have some file that Alice is cool with sharing to the world. Let's check. Let's check that that file exists. All right. Okay, so now let's get a little more interesting, and maybe add a file to the private folder. Alice has a secret that she doesn't want anyone to know. Um, okay, and now Alice is like, all right, I trust Bob. I want to have Bob sync, uh, have, want his file system to uh, see all of my files. So she's going to provide her files, um, her file system. And let's move over to Bob. So Bob also has to initi uh, initialize APA. And then he can pull from Alice. So currently, uh, yeah, the poll happens, you know, Alice and Bob have some side channel where they're communicating. Okay, and we very quickly synced the file systems, but let's, let's make sure. So Bob wants to take a look at these files. So he's going to mount the file system and let's see. Ooh. Cool, demo gods are good. So he can see her public file system and he can see her private files as well. So now Bob has his own secret that he wants to share. Um, and let's see if he can get that back to Alice. Bob's secret's a little less dramatic. He just likes to sleep with a teddy bear. Um, but he trusts Alice with this information, so he's now going to provide, and uh, Alice is now going to pull. Great. Now, the secret sauce there is we actually only did an incremental transfer. We didn't transfer the whole system. We reconciled what was different and just sent the diff. And now let's make sure that Alice uh, was able to read Bob's secret. Hmm? And now Hello. he knows. She knows. Alice knows. Um, okay, and Philip's going to tell you a little bit about how this is structured what actually happened. and what actually happened. All right, so basically we got together yesterday and hacked all of this together. We connected up RS WinFS with IRO. We built something, some small extension into IRO, and with that, this was possible. In the future, there's like some awesome stuff that might come. But the protocol basically is uh, what, what does the incremental sync here. Uh, this is, you can think of this as like a very, very simple version of Chimera or uh, like a version of back then queries desync, right? Uh, so Bob and Alice both have these file systems here. And uh, it's basically a block store, and they know their root SID. And from that, they can just calculate all of the hashes that are reachable from a like, root SID, of course. Uh, then they send over these hashes to Alice. Uh, so Alice can do this computation for their own file system, can compute the diff of these hashes. And from that, uh, it computes a, an IRO collection which is a very flat data structure, but this works for us now, um, and can answer with like a bunch of blocks which are sent over very quickly. So this is a one round trip kind of protocol. Uh, and of course, sending over all of the hashes is not gonna be uh, scalable in the future, but that's then where we think that maybe adding in a bloom filter or other kinds of optimizations, making this a multi-round protocol may make this very fast. All right, that's basically it. Do yeah. you wanna add anything? No, I think that's Cool, that's thanks. Sorry, there was a question.
question? So, oh, okay. Um, what was kind of nice, there was one or two things that we needed to change that were on our roadmap anyway. One of them was adding um, like an extension to our request protocol. So um, being able to say, uh, to send over a small request message and get a collection back. Previously, um, that action wasn't possible. What else changed? Yeah, that was like basically, that's basically, that's basically that's it on the, the IRO side. IRO itself yeah. it. um, the thing is right, if you're only in content address world, you can't tell anybody, like, you don't know the hash of the things that you want, right? So you have to have a way um, to tell them, like, give me the hash and the things that you have. And that's basically extent the extension is like, hey, give me a thing that I don't know the hash of yet. And then w the, this protocol hooks up on both sides, basically, and does the calculations of the actual sending and then passes that down to our own. Effectively, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, do you have ideas for how you can implement this for peers that don't have static IPs, like for something more like P2P based? Uh, yes, so we're right now working on hole punching. It's not merged yet, so we can't fully demo it yet, uh, but that is coming, including full relay support. So this is just like, would you describe this as like slapping IRO on top of like structures that were present when WinFS for transport and doing diff calculation or like? Yeah, so yeah. Ba basically yeah. we, we, we wrap IRO with WinFS and yeah. yeah. But the, the important piece there was like, we wanted to know like, are the abstractions in IRO good enough to actually do that? Yeah. We, because like, we think there are, but like we need to actually prove that. Um, how is this gonna work? when there are a lot more concurrencies at two peers, and they don't necessarily know where they diverged, and they're not connected at the same time. <laughs> if they're not connected at the same time, you need to have like some central place where you put off the data and like kind of a hub. Uh, I mean, this does not work in this way, like peer to peer, obviously, if one thing is offline while the other thing wants to fetch the update. Uh, in general, like what we didn't do yet in this prototype, but what is in principle possible is pulling over the changes and merging them together, kind of like Git. And, but except having merge conflicts, you do it automatically and you fix that uh, after the fact. Yeah, I guess maybe a reframing of the question is, could you see that work in a scenario where these hubs that stores it, maybe something like Web3 storage, doesn't need to be aware of the state of it individual peers, and they still can pull the changes they need. So somehow they need to know like, what to request. So, or is that something the, Webster Storage need to know and track? Yeah, so there, there are two versions of this, I think. So um, the, the kind of the wrapper here that in APA, right, which like calculates the diffs and is aware of DAGs and all of these things, needs to be intelligent and understand the data structures. But it translates all of these things down under the hood to hashes that IRO understands and just lets the transfer, right? So you could have a in quote unquote dumb hub which just understands these hashes. So it couldn't do the calculations of, oh, I reduced you know, the number of things I need to send around, but I have all the things. So if you ask me for a specific hash, I will be able to answer that, right? So you could, you could either have this kind of dumb hub which just stores all the things and just speaks the underlying IRO protocol, which was the kind of the goal, which was why if you send over this re simple request, right, the answer looks exactly the same as if I send it, basically if I send, had sent, give me this hash, except that it was calculated on the other side. So you could have it as like a proxy in, the, in between. But now if you want to do the optimizations of calculating the diffs, obviously then the hub would need to be more, like actually speak this higher level protocol. Thanks.